Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. We're back today with another trailer reaction and this time it is for the baby's banner. Um, and obviously we got the silhouettes for it last night. I was thinking before we saw the silhouettes that they might do three houses babies this year, but they didn't. Uh, it's pretty obvious that it is not three houses. Uh, but anyways, here to discuss that with me is someone who you guys have definitely seen on the channel before and that is Hundley. Hello everyone. Uh, yeah, so this baby banner, uh, I've seen some conflicting ideas all across uh, Twitter.com, the only reputable news source in the world. Please do not fact check me on that. <laughs> um, and there are really two combinations that I've seen floating around. One of them is Almond Fay from Valentia, and the other one is Ellawood and Rebecca from Alib. I personally want to see another Alm because that would mean we're probably not going to get another Linalt so soon. <laughs> so I'm shooting for Valentia, but I'm okay with being wrong, especially if Ninian is on this banner, because I am a fan. You are, but you're also an Eliwood fan, right? So... I mean, yes, but I feel like he's going to get shafted and be the demote. I do not have high hopes for him. Honestly, though, I feel like the baby banner, even in terms of demotes, always has something good there. Um, maybe not always. Good. Boyd was like... Good in theory, <laughs> but like Baby Innes was really good. Um, Baby Minerva, I think, was the first one, was also pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank as to who else is Mark on this. was a relic of his time. Yeah. Leon. Yep. Um, yeah. But anyway, let's just see what's on this banner. Let's let's find out. Uh, okay, got the link. Let's make it full screen. I'm going to pretend I didn't see the pop in when it did that. Okay. I also saw it. <laughs> well, I know what this song is. Yeah. The real question is, does Patrick Sates have a different voice? Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he's adorable. He's close friend. He's also my rival. I love how we now have an ancient Hector in this game and a baby Hector. <laughs> Asti is hard. Armored Beast? Oh no. This is gonna be a PRF defensive special. Oh no. Oh! Um. Is it gonna be inheritable? Elliwood! Oh no! He's so Bloody small! Friend. To follow in my father's footsteps. Oh, he's so tiny! <laughs> I think this is Resplendent Roy's artist, too. I think so, yeah. Oh. oh, they're showing him before. He's got bones doubler. Oh, speed defense clash. Inborn idealism. Oh, he's got basically the legendary Eliwood effect as a C skill. Mm -hmm. Wowzers trousers plus twenty six speed. That's kind of crazy. Look at him go! I'm so proud of him. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> Yo, she's a bowstring. That's insane. Wait. <laughs> Hold on, is it still it's still going behind your head and it doesn't connect? Yeah, it doesn't connect. They have to be doing this on purpose at this point. Probably. Beast of Ooh, attack speed finished three on a demote Ooh, already? I need, I need that. I need that. Oh, I that's that, great. So. Well. <laughs> so you're gonna be summoning? Yeah. Well, you called it. <laughs> I'm At least she's the backpack, I guess. Wait, Mark just doesn't have a voice? <laughs> I think Mark is like the... The, uh... I guess like the player what character? Like a... Yeah. But... Sabotage attack like, they give three. They give the Chris's voices. That's true. Like, there's just no one credited for I don't really know the Mark lore, to be honest. So... Alright, what do they do? Isolation guard... Special cooldown plus two on foes. So basically, D charges the foes specials. Yeah. That's like good. I think it's really good in summoner duels. I tried really hard to find a use for that in arena this week, and it didn't work out for me. I, I mean, the run was still fine, but I did not get to clown with Mordecai as much as I wanted to. That's too bad. Mordecai would love some kind of inheritable assist, no, like movement no. assist. Huh? 
Lucius Alt. I think that was Lucius Alt. Wait, least. let's go back and see. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, you're right. Yay. Oh, that's very that cute. Like Lucius, yeah, too bad Raven's not on this banner. Yeah, we get it. You can spark. Um, uh, Hector, armored green um, axe, staying true to his roots. Uh, do you want to go ahead and read his weapon? Yes, but before I do that, can I just say, it's not our mods. We finally did it. True. Uh, it's like pre our mods, but much better. <laughs> yes. So pre our mods, also known as the Valiant War Axe. Uh, slaying at the start of combat if units HP is greater than 25%. Inflicts attack defense minus six on foe during combat. Inflicts special cooldown and charge minus one on foe per attack. So guard minus six. Reduces damage from foe's attacks by 30%. Oh, it's not Moving even it's not even first attack, it's just attacks general. Oh, from attacker, oh my god. Yeah. Also, if units within three spaces of an ally, inflicts penalties on foe's attack during combat equal to twelve minus the foe's max special cooldown times two. So if you're familiar with Arcane Nastrand, it will be very similar to that. Uh this unit is going to be Tonky. Yeah. <laughs> Armored Beacon? I I feel like this is going to be inheritable, just because I would be shocked if they gave him three PRF skills. I would just be shocked. Um, There's, like, almost no way. I like, feel like I, this I is, like, a, a, a Lin, like a, a Flame Tribe Lin yeah. type situation. Yeah, there, that's what I was saying. There's almost no way this is also a PRF. I was agreeing with you poorly, I promise. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know. I was just furthering my point. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is... Well, let's read it. I will save my thoughts for after. So, Armored Beacon boosts special damage by 40% of unit's defense. That's a lot. Uh, if foe's range equals 2 and unit or foe special is ready or triggered before or during this combat, reduces damage from foe's next attack by 40%. So this is very clearly, like, the vital Aster equivalent for tanky units. Bro, this is just... What? <laughs> yeah, it's... That, that's not okay. It's better bonfire with 40% damage reduction against ranged units. Well, it has less power than Bonfire, right? Because Bonfire is 50%. But oh, yes, my bad, way. my bad. And then while you were reading that, I was kind of peeking at Ostia's heart, and I'm like, y'all just don't get to have stats against this unit. You want to read that? Of course. So unit can counterattack regardless of foe's range. If foe initiates combat or foe's HP is greater than or equal to 75%, inflicts attack defense minus 8 on foe during combat. And also, when unit deal damage to foe, restores 7 HP, triggers even if 0 damage is dealt. So, uh, with Vengeful 4, he will be doubling back. That is 14 damage per combat that you have to re-break through after he gets 30% on every hit, an additional 40% <laughs> on a follow-up attack if he triggers Armored Beacon. Uh, also, on top of having at least uh, minus 18 attack on the foe. That's a lot. <laughs> Just smile and wave, like, th this unit is going to be... I don't think it's going to be, like, game-breaking, but it will be annoying. I like that this is another option for people who don't want to run Hardy Fighter. Like, this is, like, you you now, as an armor, as a far save armor, you do not have to run Hardy Fighter. You could run this instead um, and still be... I don't know if this is more optimal than Hardy Fighter, but it is it is quite good. I'd like to make an addendum to the statement I just made. Add an extra minus four attack on top of that. I forgot Vengeful 4 did that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Armored Beacon, I guess it remains to be seen what the inheritance restrictions are. My guess would be it's the same as... Uh... Actually, no, not the same as Vital Astra, because Vital Astra is infantry only. What if this is... It's probably armored only from the name. <laughs> I'm thinking melee armor only. Yeah, probably. Melee armor. So, you know, Brave Hector can use this. Any of no, your no, arcane no, no. weapon... Stop it. No, he can't. Not allowed. Oh, he <laughs> definitely can. He definitely can't use this. No, 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 no. He's not allowed. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Eliwood. Uh, Sword Cav. He has a lot of competition in that class. Oh, no. I'm going to go ahead and read his sword. Um, so, Fiery War Sword. Slaying. If unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grants Spectrum plus X to unit during combat, where X is the number of bonus effects active on unit, excluding stat bonuses times three plus five max 17 so so, so how what would you need to get to 17 you would need four four, four. bonus effects Wait. yeah 
Four times three is 12, and then plus five is 17. I don't know why I was looking at the five and thinking it was times five. <laughs> I broke my own brain there, but yeah, you're right. Um, a four is like relatively, I mean, actually, now that I look at it, with his inborn idealism, he literally gives himself two, so. He's halfway there. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what else he's got. Neutralizes effects that guarantee foes follow-up attacks and effects that prevent units follow-up attacks. Isn't that usually worded opposite? Like, isn't it usually neutralizes effects that prevent units follow-up attacks and guarantee foes follow-up attacks? You're asking the wrong person. I have no idea. Okay, I don't know either. <laughs> and reduces damage from foes' first attack. It did sound weird when you said it, so maybe. Yeah. So he's got slaying. He's got a bunch of spectrum stats. He's got full null follow-up, which is really strong, actually. The full null follow-up, I feel like, is underrated in terms of how strong it is. Um, and then 40% DR on the first hit. I, I'm a genius. I just thought of his best partner. Mm, Brave Crom? I mean, probably no. not. Uh, Mythic Asker. Specifically Mythic. Because, like, you could kind of get away with doing it with um, New Year's, but... The beast, him being a beast, activates the C skill without needing anybody else on the team. True. So, like, you you could do either, but you would just need to make sure you have a beast on the team because you would get the two resonance effects plus bonus doubler plus null panic. You're already at your max stats. Yeah. That's insane that one unit can support that whole thing yep. without, like, you, they just get them. Like, yep. there's no setup. <laughs> I was thinking Na would also be a decent partner, but she does only give one visible stat effect. Um, but she does activate his effect. And she does give him the, the world breaker effect. The so ramping, yeah. Yeah. I mean speed defense clash is a thing. Um I don't think it's gonna be optimal on almost anyone <laughs> as opposed to I don't like think it's optimal on him if I'm being honest with oh, you. Oh yeah, no, like you would rather literally just have like attack speed clash on him, but Wouldn't I mean it be so silly to just like give him Brave Celeste's kit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um this is a good unit. Uh-huh. Uh, his support is equivalent to Legendary Eliwood, though, so I would say if you're only pulling him for support, um, and you've already got Legendary Eliwood, Beast of ooh, I there's no point, <laughs> but he has a unit on, on his own, it's quite good. Because instead of it being split, ac split across the sword and the C skill, it's all in, all of the support is in the C, so he can have a more selfish weapon. Yes. Also, he's, like, several generations newer, so inherently he's going to be much better yeah. offensively. Hello, guys. I was late. <laughs> yes, we have Blukins joining. Um, he just popped in VC in the middle of me and Hudley recording. It was a, quite a big shock to all, all three of us when he realized we were recording. But um, he's, he's going to okay. join us for the rest of the video. <laughs> Um, have you seen the trailer oh, at all? No, in this banner. No, I have not. <laughs> uh, Hector is an axe armor that doesn't have armads, and Elliewood is what if legendary Hellywood? Oh my goodness, <laughs> Hellywood. What if legendary Elliewood, but actually had combat potential. Ooh, okay, I can see that now. I can see that right now. Uh, that seems pretty good. Not gonna lie. It is. All right. Well, moving uh, to the demo. The demo. <laughs> yep. Look, it's Rebecca. Oh my god. Uh, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for... for uh, Esquero, the guy Esquero. the guy who makes the Faye unit builder and a bunch of other resources for the yeah, Faye community. He's uh, a super big Rebecca fan. Uh, so yeah, she's an infantry uh, bow. Colorless bow. Um, actually, yeah, Blue, do you, wanna, do you wanna read the weapon? Hell yeah. Gusty war bow. Effective against beasts. An accelerate special trigger. That's really interesting. It has slaying on a weapon on a demote. Yep. Uh, that's cool. A start of turn if unit is within three spaces of an ally and unit special cooldown count is at its maximum value. Grants special cooldown count minus one to unit. Okay, you want that eye on this thing. <laughs> um, if unit is within three spaces of an ally, grants attack, speed, defense, resistance plus five to unit. And reduces damage from foes versus attack by X percent during combat. If in combat against a beast foe or a cavalry or flying foe with range equals 2, X equals 60, otherwise X equals 30. Okay, so it's a, if it's a beast, it's 60. If it's a cab or a flyer with range 2, it's also 60, otherwise it's just 30. 
that is a mouthful, but okay. Yes. And also, if you need special is ready or you need special trigger before or during this combat, deals plus seven damage during combat. Uh, that is actually really, really nice for a demote. <laughs> yeah, I just really wish this was in the normal pool instead. This fodder, like, I just hate when they lock this to the to the limited pool. Look. Oh, it's Marky Mark. Yep. Hanley, you wanna read this? Of course I would. All right, total war tone. Slaying. Who's surprised? I'm not. <laughs> At start of turn, inflict attack speed, defense res minus five, sabotage, and stall on closest foes within five spaces of unit, and foes within two spaces of those foes through their next actions. At the start of combat, if unit is alive, inflicts another attack speed, defense res minus five on foe during combat, and unit makes a guaranteed follow up attack. And also, if a stat penalty is active on any foe within two spaces of target, neutralize the effects that inflict special cooldown charge minus X on unit during combat. So if there is a penalty on the foe or anyone within two spaces of that foe, you get the offensive half of tempo, which is insane. Yep. Uh, and then the sabotage status effect inflicts penalty on units attack speed defense res during combat equal to the highest penalty on each stat between unit and allies within two spaces of unit through its next action. Calculates each stat penalty independently. That's so much. This, this is too much. They went from making it so units have a bajillion stats, a la Flame Lin, to units can have no stats, a la this unit and Baby Robin? Nectar. Oh. Who'd you say? I was, I was thinking Legendary Robin, but that's that's different. Yeah, because yeah, like he, he negatives his own stats to yeah. make them bigger. So it's like, yeah. he's playing the fence. Uh, yeah, but the thing is... This is a unit that is coming out now when Legendary Robin is like the most annoying unit for me to deal with. Yeah. And it's like a blue unit that <laughs> inflicts a ton of debuffs on the foe. It, it's like the, the worst thing you can have to fight uh, Robin. But yeah, no, I mean, another basically unavoidable set of debuffs. I, am I the only one who's annoyed with all these units nowadays who, like, not only do they have an upgraded range compared to Menace, it's like it inflicts people within five spaces, but it's also people within two spaces of the person within five spaces. That just annoys me. Like, there's too many debuffs. Like, I'm not a fan. Okay, Aversa user. <laughs> no, it's different. It's different because imagine if Aversa also inflicted it on people within two spaces of the people who are already inflicted. Like, it's just... It's like the new thing, this gen, and I'm not a fan of it. It's like so many debuffs. I'm going to read Sabotage AR3. Um, because... Yo, didn't they already do that with Chaos Season? <laughs> I would argue it's the opposite of sabotaging. But... I love Chaos Season. I just need That was the only change I could think of that I could make a dig at. Um, at start of turn, if any foe's res is less than unit's res, and that foe is adjacent to another foe, inflict attack res minus 6 on that foe through its next action. At start of combat... If unit's res is greater than foe's res, inflicts attack res minus X on foe during combat, where X is 3 plus the highest penalty on each stat between target and foes within two spaces of target. Calculates each stat penalty independently. So, hey, what were you just saying about foe in two spaces with <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean... Uh, so, the, the adjacency condition is the same. Um... He's and then effect? it's so let's think about it it would be three plus let's assume you have so you're basically inflicting attack res minus nine on the foe just with this sabotage active uh it's also a supportive skill like you get that on your combat but all your allies are also benefiting from you the debuffing well from the physical debuff or the visible debuff yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but they're not benefiting also, from the in combat debuffs i gotta ask is this an insane power creep to the chill skills the tier four chill skills i would say more a side grade than anything um i would say it's overall stronger but i, I definitely wouldn't call it a power creep i mean it's just that would require me knowing what the tier four chill skills do it's <laughs> It's it the tier four chill skills are the ones where it's like the highest stat total plus people within two spaces of that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, 
So that um, one can potentially give you more visible debuffs, uh, especially on teams where adjacency is not a thing. However, it doesn't have the in-combat uh, potential. And it doesn't require... Because both of these require you to win a res check. Yes, that's true. So... That's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one requires a res check. Which, like, isn't hard to do with stuff like still water and just, like, in general, good res. But, yeah, good unit gonna be annoying if you run into them in arena but at least they are not a wait no they're a duo so they're gonna score really high they're gonna be everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> i was like oh at least they're not a harmonic then i was like wait i got that mixed up <laughs> they're the ones who do have the good bst for arena i feel like uh... the fact that they gave yuri the stall immunity basically <laughs> <laughs> i feel like they, they knew what they were doing like imagine how mad people would have been if they release Yuri with no stall immunity, and then all of a sudden you've got this unit. Duo skill. Isolation, guard, special cooldown count plus two on foes within three rows or three columns centered on unit. Okay, so that's the... you don't get to play the game, but... <laughs> it, I think this will be very strong in summoner duels. Um, yeah. Probably pretty good in arena too, but... Like, the people who have pre-charged specials in arena tend to like have some kind of times pulse or some way to get it back anyways so mm. that's not going to be too big of an effect in arena but the isolation could be nice for sure to stop people yeah. like duo crom and dancers uh from ruining your day also i don't know it's very good for some other duels but if you have duo thor i feel like the duo, duo thor is still more valuable for some other duels. yeah probably i just realized they're both blue tones yeah, all I'm saying is, if you don't need this, don't spend your orbs. If yeah. You this character, spend all of them. Yeah. Look, the, it's Baby Lucius. Oh, Baby Lucius. Yep. Is he gonna have a perf? Oh because god, I hope so. That is, that is something actually exciting. Is yeah, you're right. Would this be our first... Staff? Would this be our first Grand Hero Battle staff with a PRF? It would be. I think so. Or when I say Grand Hero Battle, I'm in Tempest Trial, but you guys know what I mean. Like yeah, a Grail yeah. unit. Grail, yeah. Yeah. Because children always have perfs. Yeah. I guess. Well, I think that's enough um, for tonight. We've bowling. been talking for like 40 minutes. I definitely have to cut wow. some of this. <laughs> we love yeah, bowling. Sure. I sure was here for 40 minutes. <laughs> Just wait till you see the new Inheritable Armor special. For real. Oh, Potentially no. or... We don't know yet. Inher what? Yeah. Anyway, with that note. Get your cliffhanger. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm... go cry. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you guys are gonna be pulling on this banner. Uh, if you're a fan of one of these characters, I hope you're happy. These do look all super cute, and they all look really strong as well. Um, also, thank you to the Promenaders. Shout out to the Promenaders. Thank you guys so much. Uh, both of the guys here are actually Promenaders too, so they're pretty cool. Oh so my God. yeah. <laughs> also, Boju Naka for CYL. Isn't it kind of early for CYL voting? I'm campaigning. Not in his heart. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Blue and Hunley, for joining me. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.